Hey guys, it's me again, Barry with Barry's A-Track and Classic Car Radio Repair. And this time we're demonstrating a, a conversion job on a unit out of a uh, 1968 Charger 500. Uh, this comes from Roger in Shorewood, Illinois. That's pretty close to my hometown of Missouri. Uh, hi, Roger from the Midwest. Uh, alrighty, so let's go ahead and uh, this is just a, a basic FM conversion with your uh, USB and Bluetooth functions. Of course, I've got the line input. Uh, this customer has requested that we use his original connectors, which is fine. Uh, we just don't get that massive increase in power output. It's just going to be a, a two-channel radio like it was before, except now it has FM, Bluetooth, and USB reader. So let's go ahead and turn the radio on. I've got it set to FM at the moment. <laughs> And that's our classic classical station, and to receive that here is pretty decent. Okay, just run her down the dial. Well, calls to a CSN. Is on the way, and I leave you with supply. It was great. Thanks for listening. Thank you. 92.9. There's about 15 FM stations so far. It's about oh 32 or 33 FM stations. So let's switch to my favorite AM antenna. We'll check the AM function. And the way that we switch between AM and FM on a radio that does not have the AM FM switch is we just turn it off and then right back on within about half a second. So here we go. Off on. Okay, now we're on the AM band. We get three stations in my area. Inside. That means it's time to show your support. One. If you're ready. To Two. Mexican, then why are you allowed and to say, I'm no third AM station. So let's go back to FM and then we'll test the A track. Okay, now we're going to test the A track function. We have Bonanza guitars on deck here. So let's throw some Bonanza guitars in here. You know, switch tracks a bunch of times. Right sounding H track. Okay, and now we'll be just a, a real quick expert of a expert, a real quick excerpt of a popular tape so you can make sure the speed's correct. coming back by itself. Okay, let's activate the Bluetooth. Uh, I'm going to put it in pairing mode just to make sure it works. And the way that we put it, in, put it in pairing mode is we give our volume control two turns in the direction of higher volume. So let's try that. Two turns. It didn't quite activate that time, so let's try it again. Okay, I didn't return it to the original position. Here we go. Try it again. Ready to pair. There we go. Bluetooth ready to pair. Okay, now the lady uh, says Bluetooth ready to pair. And so now the unit is sending out a beacon. It's trying to pair with a portable audio device. And as you know, I, I don't go to all that extreme to pair with a device and have it operating. There's just not enough time. Uh, if it activates and goes into pairing mode, uh, I know that it's in a proper working order. So while we're waiting for the lady to come back and say pairing not completed, let's try the USB stick real quick, our USB feature. And I just 
just have my radio commercial recorded on a USB stick. Just going to plug it in, make sure it switches over and plays it. Okay, that's my uh, commercial playing. Okay, we've got our radio back. Okay, now I'm going to turn it down so I don't get nailed for copyright stuff. Let's try the line input, and that's the last thing we have to check. And I'm just going to feed a quick test tone into the aux jack and make sure that it switches over from the radio. Let's put the radio on something less popular. Okay, now we're going to just plug in a quick tone, make sure it switches over. Okay, there's one side, and there's the other side. Now, after we remove the aux signal, it will still hold on to that that signal for 20 seconds before it lets the radio come back on and that's just to make sure it's not constantly switching back and forth between songs or during quiet music Perry passages. Not completed. Okay and as promised there's a lady coming back I'm saying Perry not completed. completed. There's our radio coming back as promised and the only thing left to test is to make sure we got output on both speakers and that the balance control works and all that so let's do that real quick. Put it on a stronger station. Regional medical Wide open. You right. heard us oh, okay, it's going to rotate our balance control all the way right. That's your best gift. Great. Yeah, left. You're saying in a minute. Right. Yeah, and I will say this left. in case I'm not quite crazy okay, enough yet. Okay, and back to center. Don't call yet. Okay, make sure what? that we have both speakers on the 8-track <laughs> function. Okay, we got that. Okay, folks, that uh, that takes care of it. That is all it. We're just going to make sure that the dial light, I'm going to cut the power to the radio. Make sure that the dial light works. Okay, and you can't see it, but but yeah, there it goes. You can't really see it, but it is working. So, all right, that's confirmed, and I'm ready to get on to the next job. So if I can find myself here. Hi guys, I'm Barry with Barry's 8-Track and Classic Car Radio Repair, and you've just seen what I can do with a with an original uh, Classic Car AM radio with or without an 8-Track. Um, I can have Bluetooth, USB, FM, a heck of a lot more output power, and on some Delco radios, I can even double the number of FM station presets. So, you can reach me at 928-533-9666. My website's in the description below. Thanks very much for watching and listening, and we'll see you next time.